It's a hard knock life, isn't it? Did you buy your tripod? Or did, did you buy your jacket? Did the school give it to you? Uh, the school gave these to us. What? Why don't we get one? Yeah, why don't we get one for graduating? Um, why do we have to pay? I don't know, man. I don't know. Oh, yeah. We pay school fees, we pay for a graduation gown that we can make for you. Yeah, I, the graduation gown is quite interesting. Uh, I understand, like, because it has to be very standardized, right? It has to be, like, this is what the gown looks like, this is what it always looks like. It's got to be the same thing every time. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, yeah. So we pay money. Yeah. It's a rental. I thought, don't we get something for getting a hundred credits besides the diploma? No, you get a diploma. You That's actually it? get you get a convocation oh, cap because you you're yeah, renting you the graduation cap. Yeah, you're renting a cap and gown, but the, the cap you're not actually renting. You purchase the cap from them, and you get so you get to do whatever you want. If you with. throw the cap, yeah, you graduate. Then, then and if you, everyone else throws it, can you just pick up a random? You just pick up any oh. yeah. unless up unless you like the dazzle ears or something yeah, like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you can put because there's lots there's lots of pictures of people decorating their the top of their graduation, right? DIY um, What if they hate our graduation? Can we order? Do I get my money back? Um, uh, uh, I have to. Make I yeah, I know you paid the fees. Okay, listen up. We got lots of stuff to do today. Shh. Listen up. Can I get you to take this out, please? Take out your in investigation. I definitely don't. Okay. Take out investigation 13.4. I have lots of stuff to hand back, but somebody will hopefully remind me later to hand them back. I have all of all of the predicting redox reactions assignments that I've received, I've marked them. One of them doesn't have a name on it, I'm pretty sure. Uh, all of the all of the um, Balancing redox reactions using the half reaction method. I've received the, all all of the ones I've received. I've marked and put in power school, but I haven't given it back to you yet, so that's fine. Uh, I'm going to give them back to you today. Yeah. So if you if you finish right the half reaction sheet, if you finish the half reaction sheet, or if you finish the predicting reaction sheet, then hand it in, please. Uh, I'm going to be trying to do this back to you today. Okay, we're doing investigation 13.4. Everybody asked this out, yes? Yes, sure. yes. Yes, perfect. Everybody calculated, did their pre-lab question. Everybody should have gotten close. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Don't ask anybody else because they're not going to tell you, right? Okay. You should have gotten close to two grams. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Close to two grams. I got three hundred. No, not the molar mass. The mass, right? <laughs> the actual mass that you have to actually weigh out for the actual lab, right? You should have got. Well, I yeah. So the the molar. Remember the molar mass was three ninety something, right? 392.21, okay? Anyways, moving on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna really quickly kind of walk through what we need, at least in order to do the stuff that I would like us to get done today. Some people could totally theoretically, if, if, if I shut up really quick and let you go on to the lab, some people could theoretically get the entire lab done today and then have time to just do math and review and stuff uh, tomorrow. But I, I want to walk through kind of what the expectation is for today, and then we can kind of move on from there. So you should get around two grams of your iron sulfate, ammonium sulfate uh, hexahydrate. So what you need is you need uh, a bunch of different glassware. You need two 50 milliliter beakers. One of them you need for sulfuric acid. You're going to be dissolving your iron compound in sulfuric acid. One of the 50 mil beakers you need because you're going to weigh out some of the iron sulfate, ammonium sulfate hexahydrate. So the very first thing, you got to go grab all your glassware. What I would do is I would label your glassware. That's something that I do to get um, kind of organized really, really nice. 
label your beakers with masking tape and a pen or a marker or something like that. Number two, measure out the required mass of the iron compound. So you're going to go to one of the three open scales and you're going to measure your approximately two grams, right? I'm not going to tell you exactly what it is. Now, the problem is a lot of our scales, i.e. all of the ones that are open right now, they only have 0.1 decimal places like they only have one decimal place after the decimal so so you're gonna have to get as close to your specific number as you can with the understanding that it's not gonna have that second decimal place right so just get as close as you can that's gonna be one of our sources of error right because 0.1 change out of two is about five percent so that's that's a that's a big difference okay Okay, then what are we going to do? We're going to measure the mass into a clean, dry 50 milliliter beaker. Is that pretty easy to do? Yep. Okay, if you measure out too much of the stuff, what are you not going to do? Put it back. Put it back in the container that you got it from. Just give it to the next person in line. Okay, and if the next person in line doesn't exist, talk to me and we'll just kind of make an extra container. Why do you not want to put it back in the, in the container? It contaminates it. If you did not, and even if you did, we shouldn't be doing this, but if you did not totally clean out this 50 milliliter beaker completely and totally dried it and it was perfectly spotless, if you didn't, as soon as the iron comes into contact with this stuff or even just the scupula itself, as soon as it comes into contact with that stuff, it could be contaminated now. So now there could be other chemicals in contact with this, then you put it back in the bin, now you've screwed it up for everybody who uses that bottle for the rest of the time, right? Uh, next, what are we gonna do? We're gonna dissolve the solid in about 40 milliliters of uh, sulfuric acid. So you can do this a couple different ways. If you want to, you can just pour your solids straight into, you probably wanna use a funnel. I had a funnel, whatever it does, it's right there, thanks. If you wanted to, you could pour this, right, from here into here. What's the problem with, I, so I poured all my solid from my weighing container into here, or did I? No, I didn't. Okay, I know that it looks like I poured all the solid into the volumetric flask, and it's totally fine, I guess, if you're on your cell phone right now. It doesn't really matter to me if you get this right, okay? So... Uh, I didn't. There's a tiny amount left in here. So what you have to do is you have to dissolve it as best you can, right? You can have a stir stick and you can do whatever you want. You can dissolve it in your sulfuric acid, pour it in, and make sure you've kind of like almost rinsed this container out and get every last little bit of it and put it into your volumetric flask. You're trying to get every last molecule of that iron or formula unit of that iron compound into your volumetric flask. Jordy. When you're dissolving it, is there still the acid? Uh, yeah, yeah, I want you to dissolve it with the acid. Like, okay. Yeah. Yep. Like rinsing out the paper, you just the acid. Yeah, I would like you to, yeah. And so, okay, so then I'm gonna rinse the sides of the funnel. Now my funnel, is, uh, is totally clean as well. Now all of my stuff's in here. Now you can just dissolve your compound by swirling it around in here if you want, right? And you don't have to worry about it. And then once all of this is dissolved, right? Still add, make sure you add about 40 milliliters of acid because you need excess acid for this titration to work out. Okay, so I, I dissolved all of my iron compound into 40, mil, 40 milliliters-ish of sulfuric acid. Then what do I have to do? What's the next thing I gotta do? Transfer the solution. Yeah, I, so I, I transferred it into the volumetric flask already. I kinda did it backwards, but it doesn't really matter. Just make sure your sulfuric acid and all your solid gets into the vol flask. Then what do you gotta do? Potassium. potassium. You gotta add the potassium per and then clean dry one fifty milliliters. Yeah. Okay. Good. So I sorry. I gotta complete the preparation. So I gotta fill this up to a hundred, right? So remember, you gotta fill this all the way up to a hundred. Might take a little while, but it's totally fine. If you wanna take the cap off, you can. There's how do you do? You remember how to use a volumetric flask? Kind of. Kind of. The volumetric flask looks like this. Okay. I'm a crappy artist, so just, you know, whatever. 
Oh man, that's terrible. Hey, <laughs> this is this is my volumetric flask, and there's a very specific graduation on here, right? There's a very specific line, and you want to fill up. You want to fill up the rest, right? You added your your acid and your iron two plus, right, for forty milliliters. Now you got to top it up with distilled water all the way until that point. But what's the key part about this? Would you remember from Chem 20? The meniscus, right? Your little, your water is going to have a meniscus on the edges of the glass. And the very bottom of that meniscus has to be at, at the level of the calibration line. So we're going to fill it up, we're going to fill it up all the way, fill it up, fill it up, fill it up, and then once we do that, find an appropriate stopper that actually fits your container, and just invert it 10 times, because you're just trying to mix the distilled water, the acid, and the iron, and yes, I am trying to count, okay? So you're just going to do this 10 times. Okay, that whole sequence of stuff, this whole thing should take like max 10 minutes. How much, how much while I was explaining it to you, how long did it take? I don't know, about, probably about five minutes or something like that. So that should take 10 minutes. It took some people in Mr. Zakowski's class 40 minutes to do that. Okay? So I just want to make sure that we understand what the expectation is. That should be no problem at all. Now I've got my iron solution. Keep in mind it's filled all the way up to the calibration line, right? I've got my iron solution here. Now what I want to do is uh, I want to be able to prep my burette. Now the burette I've already kind of prepped. The burette comes in two pieces. There's a burette, and then there's the bottom part. Does anybody remember what the bottom part? It's a stopcock, yeah, okay. Okay, so we've got a stopcock. So you have to match up your stopcock with your burette. If the burette that you pick has one of these white thingies on it, then it matches up with one of the blue stopcocks because they, once you cram this in here, then you should be able to tighten up this. And what's happening? Why are we, why are we tightening this up? We're, we're, we're trying to prevent the, any um, uh, titrant from coming out of this area here. But also, we're trying to prevent, every single year this happens. Every year, we're trying to prevent the following thing from happening. Okay, so just bear with me. Just give me a second. So uh, when people are, are performing their titration, when they're turning the valve on their stopcock, sometimes they can kind of tug down on it a little bit. And if these things are not secure with each other, what happens is over the course of a little bit of time and a little bit of time and a little bit of time, what happens to the stopcock? Oh, it pops off. And what happens to all of your potassium permanganate? It goes oh, all the time. <laughs> right? So it goes all over the counter. It goes all over your sheet. It goes all over your clothes and everything like that. And so you just want to make sure that you don't do that. So I would suggest that you grab, if I were you, I would suggest you grab a stop or a burette with a white piece of plastic on it and match it up with a blue, um, with a blue uh, stop clock. Now here's the deal. Um, the potassium permanganate is purple, so you're going to fill this up with a purple solution. Now here's what I, I need you to understand. Your burette, do you know for certain... <laughs> <laughs> it's totally clean and dry. No, so you're going to take your purple solution, right? You're going to take your purple permanganate. I don't want to waste any permanganate. That's why I'm not doing this, okay? So what I want you to do is I want you to pour like 5 to 10 milliliters into here, okay? So I just fill it up a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my burette and without dumping it out the side, right? I'm going to try and rinse the sides of my burette with potassium permanganate. Why am I doing this? I'm, I'm decontaminating it. I'm trying to rinse any contaminants that are in here out. So you're going to just dump it, dump it out into your waste beaker. And it might take a little while, so do that once at least, right? Now, if there was any water left over, you've rinsed out that extra water with the potassium permanganate. So make sure it gets flushed out totally, 
And once it gets t flushed out totally, right? I didn't do that because I'm impatient and I want to get you guys going. Once it gets flushed out totally, then you can fill it up almost all the way. You want to fill it up to where? Um, anywhere before the top line, right? This, this zero milliliter mark, okay? Uh, now it's fine if you go over, because if you go over, you just drain it out until the, the mark um, goes back to where you are, or it goes back under the zero mark. So uh, then we attach it. If you have troubles attaching this to this, right? Just let me know if you've never done anything like this before. Uh, and then, so you're basically good to start titrating, right? And a clean, uh, yeah, permanganate, rinse out the burette, good. Transfer 10 milliliters of iron to solution, okay? So we've got our iron two solution here. It should have been filled up, but whatever you know. Then we're gonna take a pipette. Does anybody not remember what a pipette looks like? It's the balloon. It's the it's the thing with the bulb. It's the long glass. Do you want me to go get it? Do you need a do you need a Okay, so it's you take the bulb. You're I, I want to be super clear. You are not you are not cramming the bulb on the end. Right? On your pipette, you're just gently pressing the bulb against the pipette. What you're going to do is you're going to squeeze the bulb, put it on the pipette very gently. You're going to pull up a little bit of your iron solution, and then you're going to dump it into the waste. Why are you pulling up some iron solution and dumping it into the waste? Decontaminate. You're decontaminating the pipette now. Okay? So you're going to pull up all the way again until the meniscus is at the, the, the calibration line. And then you're going to take it over and you're going to dump it into your Erlenmeyer flask. Once you have it dumped into your Erlenmeyer flask, then you can put it on here. Whoops. <laughs> Too low. Then you can put it on here and then you can start your titration. Okay? Um, Jordy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> If you want to use a magnetic stirrer and a magnetic stir bar, if you're a lazy piece of garbage, that's fine. That's totally fine. It doesn't matter to me. Okay? But the better way to do this, kind of the, the more reliable way that doesn't kick up a bunch of solution all over your flask, is just by taking your non-dominant hand and wrapping it around the base so you can control the stopcock with your non-dominant hand, right? You can open it up full or you can close it. And then you're just gonna swirl with your dominant hand. This is, this is the far superior method of titrating because you're kicking up much, much, much less solution to the sides of the Erlenmeyer flask, okay? Your, your titration, the purple stuff is going to turn what color when it hits here? Colorless. Colorless, right? The purple stuff's going to go colorless. Now, when color starts to persist for a little while, then start to slow down. Do you remember, did your Chem 20 teacher tell you what to do for the first trial? Just, just let it rip. Just absolutely just let it rip, right? <laughs> and then as soon as it turns permanently pink, close it. And then you're going to get a reading for your initial and final. And that's like a ballpark reading, right? Don't go drop <coughs> by drop for three hours, right? And for, on your first trial. Your first trial, just absolutely unleash on it. And you'll know, oh, it was about 15 milliliters. So once you get close to like 12 milliliters, then start going slower. Does that make sense? It is okay if you do not get all of your titrations done today. I want you at least to prepare your standard solution and try to get a couple iron titrations done. Chroma! Can I go on, buddy? I can't hear you. Chroma, what? How come that was in front of you? Uh, because I didn't want to waste for making it. <laughs>